That Thought was it was over. over. <laughs> so let's talk about what the landscape's missing. Yahoo! If you haven't watched the first part of this video yet, go check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Without further ado, let's go! The league looking to expand. Obviously, I think it'd be really beneficial if those clubs were in like other major cities. Like we already have London and Manchester covered, but if we had cities like Birmingham and Liverpool, and perhaps where um you know other successful football teams are, Leeds. It's more beneficial for the league. Obviously, if you you know teams are in bigger markets, club merch and theme nights. I think these two go together, but I think club merch needs to be a lot easier to get hold of not just by the clubs themselves I think the BBL need to play a part in that the same way you can purchase things on the NBA site I feel like the BBL site needs to be the same way it should just be a lot it should just be a lot easier for fans across the country to tune in like a team go to the website get a jersey support hello editor Josh here the increased access to jerseys also strengthen British basketball's position in the culture basketball jerseys are already a part of mainstream fashion it would make sense to position yourself within that market. Goodbye for now. Theme nights. Theme nights can be a fun way that you can play with jerseys and games that are coming up. So last season when I was with the Giants and we played the Riders, we obviously did the retro night. One at our place, one at their place. We got a lot of positive responses from our fan base because they love the jerseys. So the whole anticipation of the whole event. If there is, you know, a special jersey for a special night and a special occasion, it just brings a bit of a, a bit of razzle-dazzle. It can be with holidays, even just for local rivalries, because this is a small league, you play a lot of the same teams. You can add some theme nights, it kind of spices everything up a little bit. Very recently, the uh, salary cap just got taken away, so London basically can, you know, pay people as much as they need to pay people for them to come from over here and play. I'm not mad at it at all. It's 100% a step in the right direction and almost a necessary evil for the league to go where it needs to go. However, I think more important is the minimum wage. Now at the moment there is no minimum wage. There's no guaranteed amount that a domestic player could rely on that they're going to walk into a team and make. I've had teammates and been on myself an atrocious salary and you know you should have a bit more security when you're playing as a domestic player. Other leagues I feel like do a slightly better job ensuring some security for their domestic players and a minimum wage will certainly certainly do that. You know domestic players don't want to feel like they're getting lowballed all the time. I feel like it kind of speaks for itself. We have a minimum wage if you work nine to five, I should have a minimum wage, like doing my job. I feel like for quite a few years now, domestic players have been taken advantage of by the BBL team. Sort of like incentivizing people to come play in the league. There needs to be some work on their end to try and like rebuild that relationship. And I think implementing a minimum wage is a step in the right direction. I'm gonna say this first. I think the signings of Kareem, Bradley, Blake, uh, Jelani even. I think these are I think these are our steps in the right direction. I am talking more historically a trend that needs needs to continue if this league is gonna grow and be successful. I think clubs and their coaches need to take a bit more responsibility, you know, in working with prospects and having a hand in developing talent and farming it almost and giving it the opportunities to get their feet wet providing court time and the environment for them to get better and this, that, the third. That's important because these are the play these are potentially future national team players. Honestly, having been one of these players where I've gone to college and it hasn't really worked out. I'm an Italian kid and I go to the States and it doesn't work out. I want to come back early. Just have the option of just, well, I can just go play first division and life. like it, there's a secure job back home. This is far from the case for English players. And I think, like I said in the point before, there has to be steps made forward to kind of like change that narrative on the other side, not just players just needing to come home. You know, and th these these are the kind of things that take time. It's not gonna happen overnight. You know, you're not just gonna sign everybody. You're not gonna get every single kid you want, but you, you should be aspiring to get these players. Put something together that's appealing to this kid. Give him some security, something long-term where he sees an out. But to sit and do nothing, it's just not very aspirational. Most clubs in Europe get a lot of their money from buyouts of young players also. So it's a really normal thing to do. We're not the only country in this predicament. You know, you wanna make sure that you're just in contact with these players when they're ready to come back. They need somewhere to work out. Yes. When they come back, they, or if they had a couple years overseas or whatever, and they're looking for plans at home, 
You want them to be thinking of you. Security is appealing to a lot of people, and you, some people realise that sooner than others. Players' union. It's also one that gets thrown around a lot. Players, we need a union. If we can get a union, we can start getting things like minimum wage, blah, blah, blah. A union's impossible when players don't hang around the league enough. A union is kind of dependent on clubs playing ball as far as like signing guys long term. There isn't 10 players in the league right now that could communicate frequently and consistently for a union to be set up. I think that's the challenge that we need to overcome as players. That's that's the hurdle we're currently facing. We don't have enough familiar faces to to talk and share information and 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 uh, organize. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frog gay. Um, if you ask me, yourself, or ask anyone you know who's a big basketball fan, who is the leading scorer of all time in the NBA? LeBron James. Now do the same with the BBL. Leading rebounder. Who? Most MVPs. You can't do it. I think that we need more education pushed at us until we can have these kind of discussions that we have with the NBA. Comparing players and teams from different eras. It's a big part of sport. It's a big part of fandom. Yeah. That's an important one. Would help create some culture, maybe. I don't know. 90% of the time, I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, consider liking and subscribing. Hello, motherfucker. And I'll see you guys later.